Okay, the memory card just ran out, so I've switched back to the 16 gigabyte memory cards, but I'm a bit worried that's not going to work because I've had so many technical problems with that, but I'll give it a go. So, I might as well start again. This is the Collector's Guide 2001 by Harold N Nadermeyer from Germany, and this was widely available in America, and it's quite a small book. quite handy, it goes up to the power of the Jedi so you've got a picture there ok this tells us about the backs of the cards and what to look through, mint on card, what it means and looks at the backs of the cards and the front you've got an Empire Strikes Back card, TIE Fighter Pilot there and the Return of the Jedi logo ray there um, and it goes on to variations like the most famous being the Luke Skywalker with the telescoping lens, lightsaber, and the Boba Fett with the ro rocket firing Boba Fett prototypes. And then onto multi packs, which such as this French offer there, the Canadian offer there, the six pack from Empire Strikes Back, the German offer there, and the Italian offer there. I, I had the chance to buy that one, but I never did. Oh well, and that was uh, about 20 years ago almost. So then we got uh, Power of the Force and other cards, and then we got prototypes here, unproduced Kenner prototypes. So we've got some sort of sand speeder there, an attack with a can cannon fitted onto it, a sort of vehicle that would fit into the Millennium Falcon, and some sort of off vehicle there so it's quite good for the prototypes this book okay I've got to make sure you can pick me up so there's Darth Vader so we're going starting off with the vintage figures so this is how the book's set out so it has a picture of the loose figure then the carded ver version and then the prices are in US dollars and it gives you the what prices are so don't forget it's pretty out of date it's 550 for 12 back Vader 20 back 230 ESB is 100, Jedi is 45, Powder Force is 100, and the Tri Logo version is 45. So Vader is one of the figures that you can get on every um, card variation, well, card, US card variation. Then you've got the Han Solo, the big head, and the small head. So the big head is 730 on the 12 back, and the small head is 690, even though. The small head's pretty really hard to find on the 12 back, and uh, then the Star Wars 20 back Han big head is 650. Why am I focusing on the Han solos? Well, wait and see soon. Okay, we've got a Luke Skywalker that priced on the 12 back 770. We've got the Vinyl Cape Jawa. They placed that at 3,500, and the regular Jawa is 290 on the 12 back. We've got C3PO 180. Stormtroopers 370. Um, what else? Then we've got the accessories, vehicles, uh, play sets, the UK Palatoy Death Star, the Cantina Adventure set with the Blue Snaggletooth. That's valued at $700. The Death Star play set, $400. So prices are way off these days. The Troop Transporter play set, the TIE Fighter, uh, what else? The Sonic Speeder, the Jet Remote Controlled. We've got Empire Strikes Back cards, nice figures there, and then we've got the Palatoy, that R2D2 for the Palatoy sensor scope, and we've got IG-88, Imperial Commander, Heart 2 Hans there, Han Bespin, Han Hoff, and we've got the YPS Snow Trooper, that's impossible to find. I had a chance of buying one loose graded, but I just, I don't know, just sort of, and then we've got the two layers. I want to focus on this. I've, I've got quite a few of these ones. I've got that on a German Empire Strikes Back card and the Kenner 77 back. Now I've, I have gotten this profile picture as well, or the side view. So that that one's really hard to find. $200 for that. 190 for that. You've got the two variations of Luke. The Tri Logo picture on the Luke Best Bin is different. So Luke Best Bin has the most variations out of the vintage figures. We have the Hoff Romper, the Hoff Rescue Play set that was only sold in Europe. I have that. 
and then we have a few other things, the mini rigs, the Sears Cloud City, Snow Speeder, Trimpo Cloud Car, Return of Jedi figures, there's a two pack there, I've just come across one of those myself and it's on my channel so that's worth checking out because they're really rather hard to find and then there's another two pack there, tattoo on uh, uh, Palatoy card, that Medane's on the Palatoy card, you can tell by the extra writing at the top and no lo no Kenner logo. Then you've got more of Luke Jedi there, you've got the B-Ring Pilot, 88, uh, Han, two variations of ha Han, you've got the camouflage lapel and the plain lapel. I haven't got the camouflage lapel yet. Katoon Skiff, uh, Prune Face, great figure there. Um, Tebow, the Italian glue stick Tebow there, a strange offer there. Wicket, Rancor, Ships, the Max Rebo free set, the Jabba Dungeon, the TIE Interceptor, Power of the Force, Anakin there, at priced at 3800 on the Power of the Force card, the Anakin, so that's more valuable than the X face on the Power of the Force card. Amana Man, Han Solo in the Carbonate Chamber, um, Luke Stormtrooper, look how bu the bubble always goes yellow on that figure, the Yak Face, that's only available in the Canadian cards, so that's the 93rd ki uh, figure, or you can get it on Trilogo. Trilogo is $400, uh, Powder Force is $1,850, but obviously that's uh, 11 years ago. Then we've got Droids accessories including the A-ring, droids figures these are valued at $20 each the, this one size form is 115 then we've got our log ray I hope this video is recording then Last, I mean because I'm rabbiting on then we go into power the force 2 figures and it's the same layout freeze frame uh, you know, so it's a really an interesting book for the sort of early days of modern collecting plus of course the vi um, vintage figures. So you've got the Jawa with the Comtech, you've got the Jawa 2-pack with the Bot, you've got Luke Skywalker, you've got uh, Luke Farmboy there, you've got Rancor Keeper, Princess Leia, you've got the Leia Slave, Leia Hoff, the few RTD2 Snowtrooper, Yak Face, the new version of Yak Face. And then Reeves, he's quite pricey. Not too pricey though. Raha, I need to get him. He's in a contact card Zuckus. Then you've got the vehicles uh three packs. Um complete galaxy or whatever they're called, the ones that are in little environments. The Banther, the Dewback, the Rancor the Wonto, Electronic Figures, uh, Epic Force, um, the uh, Jabba's Band, Figures of Coins, uh, Accessory Packs, um, Environment Packs, the Princess Leia Collection, Atat, Cruise Missile Trooper, A-Wing, the Darth Raiders, the Land Speeder, ATST, you've got so much stuff in this book, Y-Wing, the Big X-Wing, Spirit of Obi Wan. This is in the UK packaging. I have that on YouTube. Uh, still need to get the theatre Luke there. Shadows of the Empire. So, the Shadows of the Empire. I'd be looking for the European, especially the Italian cards. They look much better. And you've got the expanded universe figures. You've got the Space Trooper. I need that one still. And you've got Episode One stuff. And then it goes on and on. Prices are just out of date though. Prices of from what a lot of modern stuff just dropped so much, so you know like the two packs and stuff like that. Uh T C fourteen is a bit hard to track down. So you've got the ex creature accessory packs, uh playset environment ships. Some of these have just been re released, uh what do you call them? Uh, not swoops, you call them. And then you've got more Epic Force, you've got um, stuff from Japan, you've got the Power of the Jedi stuff, 
These are much better figures. Nice cards. Oops, my hand slipped. Powder Jedi. So we've got Powder Jedi is when things really got started to get really nice. So we've got uh, R2Q5. I've just put him up on YouTube. Um, Wara, he's worth tracking down. This figure comes in the game Escape from Feed Pack, so he's worth tracking down. Biker Scout, Sand Trooper, um, Tessic or Squid Head, uh, the Snow Speeder, and all that other stuff there. And then it has a little bit about Micronauts in the back. back. So this original cost must have cost about a tenner. I got it for about three quid on eBay. And I'm sure the guy who sold it still has them. So I'm going to just check if this video works. Hopefully it did, otherwise I've just been rabbiting on for a long time going through this book. So it's easy to find on eBay in the UK. It's only about £3. It's called Collector's Guide 2001 and it's by Harold Niedermeyer. And I think the guy who's selling them still got quite a lot of them. And so all, the t all together it's going to cost you about four or five pounds maximum because um, it's going to include in shipping or posting. And it's a reasonable book. Some of the English is a bit poor because it's been translated directly from German. So there's a f quite a few grammatical errors in this book. But otherwise it's useful. It's a European book and there's not too many European specific books and it's in the areas it covers it does a quite an adequate job so it's not a bad book and it's not too big as well so it's easy to carry around easy to just stick your nose in and browse so it's quite a useful book I'm just going to check the video if it works so and this was on sale in the states I definitely know that it's published by Star Toys so there you go Okay, next book. Okay, next book I want to show you is the official price guide to Star Wars and Star Trek collectibles, third edition. I got this back in '93, and this really sort of inspired me to get back into Star Wars collecting. It's by Sue Cornwall and Mike Knott. I've shown you a later version of this book, which is just to deal that deals with Star Wars, but this is the book that really got me back into Star Wars collecting back in '93, and so half the book's about Star Trek and the other half is about Star Wars. So it's quite an old book. It came out originally in 1991 and it's mostly in black and white but it's a really useful book. It's really, um, you know, from a novice position this really uh, gave me a good grounding in the basic basics of Star Wars collecting and you know so it's got quite a lot of information where to buy and all that sort of stuff and it goes into starts onto Star Trek so this book's even though it's totally out of date is quite uh, sentimental to me because this was the book that got me into Star Wars collecting and you've got the Star Trek aliens so you've got quite a lot about Star Trek and uh, it's not just action figures it's magazines it's books it's badges it's just everything to do with Star Trek you got to remember back in those days Star Trek was just as big as, as Star Wars if not bigger and so maybe Star Trek still is bigger um, and you've got all the different things and glasses and, and so the Star Wars section is going to be exactly the same the middle of the book it has a few colour pictures and so you've got Star Trek pictures there you've got some of the figures there including the Mego figures then the collector plates then you've got Star Trek games at the top there and Star Trek, more Star Trek stuff and then you've got Franklin Mint ships and more just Enterprise focus ships at the bottom so really interesting if you're into Star Trek and I, I, I've always liked Star Trek as well then we go into the Star Wars pictures we've got the uh, Star Wars toys and games we've got the um, laser pistol, you've got the battle game there, you've got the escape from Silent Pat Pit and all that sort of stuff, then you've got the ships from Star Wars, the original vintage ships, then you've got gold coins, those cost a fortune now, and R2-D2 focus here, okay, you've got the power of the force R2-D2 there, 
the original 84 5 version, and you've got ceramics, items, and then the posters. Uh, and so th we're still in the Star Trek section there, and then we're going to come up on the Star Wars section. You're going to see I've ticked off a few things that I've acquired over the years, so it starts with action figures there, and it gives you a few pictures at the bottom of this was really what well, just got me hooked onto Star Wars collecting and then you've got um, the, all the different figures so most of this I did back in the uh, mid 90s when I collected all the figures and carded and just ticked off what I had and stuff like that so this is probably now just half of what I've got in terms of vintage but you know and then you've got a picture there of four of the rare figures, the Anakin, the Yak Face, the Blue Snaggletooth and the Common Red Snaggletooth. So it's quite interesting this book and you know, I'm sure you could pick it up on eBay pretty cheap now. You've got four on cards, you've got the Lily Lede Mexican figure card backs, they're really hard to get, totally hard. The Brazilian Glass Lighty figures, I've got a Luke on that card. You've got the Japanese Poppy book boxes, I haven't got any of those yet. And then we've got the Palatoy um, Imperial Commander. So it does with figures, then it goes into the ships, play sets, then it goes into bumper stickers, art books, magazine articles, all that sort of stuff. Comics here. Got lots of the comics. Well, I've got the whole set of the US Marvels. It took ages to collect that. And then there's the British versions, which are even harder to collect. Which or probably impossible to collect, get the whole British set. And then you've got uh, West End games, you know, world playing games, they're pretty good. I got uh, Assault on Hoff, that was great fun. Still got that somewhere. And you've got more um, bits and bobs, magazines, model kits, um, you know. Hopefully this is recording, otherwise I'm wasting my time. It's just this 16 megabit card. It's just a. I thought it would give me a lot of time to make longer videos but it's just a proving to be a pain in the jack sea because I don't know the there's just too many faults on playback with this 16 megabit card or gigabyte card <laughs> oh well and then you've got uh, school equipment some of the helix school equipment's going for mega money on ebay these days not that I've got any and you've got the tie bomber always one of the holy grails of Star Wars collecting uh, finally last year got the a loose tie bomber and then you've got just trading cards a bit about them two, the two that wrote this book and then you know in the US it was originally $10.95 in Canada $15 got this in Forbidden Planet in 93 great book so really useful this is what really helped kick me off plus uh, the likes of these magazines here, which are the Lee's Toy Review. These are really useful magazines, give you so much information. Hard to get now in the UK, but back in those days they weren't too hard to get. And really useful. Not just Star Wars, they have loads of other stuff, you know. So this book, this one's a bit old, it's about 10, 12 years old. But, you know, it shows you how to customise figures, Street Fighter figures. Uh, the skiff, so it shows you how old this is for Power of Force. And then, what's good about this magazine is the price guide, so the context with the new figures there, the green context cards. And then, it's good looking at the old adverts for how much vintage figures were, were, were then. And then, if you get a later co update of this magazine, Hot Toys, and then tells you, the, here's the price guide itself, the Star Wars price guide, really useful. And here's the actual um, Star Wars price guide. Out of date now, but it's really a really useful, comprehensive list. Always with Lee's, they've always been a bit poor on the Tri Logo cards. They've always undervalued them. And you've got that there. So this is your Lee's action figure news. So, if you can get it in the US, I'd re thoroughly recommend this magazine, it's really useful. Good, it has, then it goes on to other toy lines in alphabetical order. Has a section, a massive section for 
um, Hot Wheels as well. And so, can't really good magazines. If I could still get in the UK at a decent price, I'd still pick it up, but it's really hard to get these days. So, and then there's um, this magazine as well, which is Tomart's version. And this doesn't have a, a comprehensive price guide, but it has lots of nice glossy pictures and, you know, has Brian's toys advert there. This is probably about 10 years old at least, so... Um, so it has the Kill Beer figures there, and maybe it's a bit more recent. And then Turtles, uh, G.I. Joe, lots about G.I. Joe, and you know, not that I'm a much of a G.I. Joe collector. I had the UK versions, the Action Men, but, and then we have more. So if you're into G.I. Joe, this makes it all wrestling figures. Oh, it has stuff about Star Wars, Indiana Jones. So, if you wanted to get Indiana Jones figures, you could uh, use this. And then it's got the LG Lin figures, Dragon Ball Z, and then Star Wars, what we all love. So, you've got the sort of Cartoon Network droid, uh, Clone Wars figures there. And some of the later last sort of saga figures there and then more adverts most of the pages are in colour oh, there's an advert for that book I've just shown you the collector's book so this was on sale in the US and it was $12.99 in the US and more adverts there for Star Wars stuff and adverts for girly action figures model figures and then other lines so, you know, quite useful. This one here is a really old um, lead. It's from number 57. I don't know if it's telling. It's from July 97. So, you know, Star Wars was just, you know. So we've got spawn figures there. Lots of spawn figures. So if you're into Spawn or G.I. Joe, you've got the Tusker G. Airmen, you've got All-Star, whatever that is, I'm not really into sports stuff. Then you've got uh, some other figures there, AFIA Info, the Spawn movie figures, they're pretty cool. Then you've got an advert for Outer Limits, uh, what else have you got? You've got Go Figure. So you can tell this is an old one because it's got uh, not glossy paper in it. You've got Star Wars advert there for um, who's this guy? Well, custom carded figures there plus the prices of mint figures there. It's amazing how cheap they were then. The vintage figures. So this is how the old magazine was about 15 years ago. G.I. Joe, tr price guide there. Starting line up. Then you've got the Star Wars price guide here. I've ticked off what I've got there, quite a lot of stuff. So, this would need updating really. But if you look at the prices, let's look at the prices of the original 12 backs. So you see, Luke with blonde hair was $350. The Princess Leia was $310, and I was $350 on the um, Jedi card. The Han Solo small head was $515, and the big head was $595. So, jar plus the final cake jar was $1,800 in those days, according to Lee's. So, there you go. And it's starting to move on to the 95 figures, Tamagotchi stuff, remember those? Uh, Big Hobby, the Stormtrooper with the hologram, that was meant to be hard to find back in the day. The Hong Kong pack, the A ASP7 droid, the Electronic Emperor, the 12 inch figures, the Dengar, Power of the Force. 
So it always has Star Wars update, and then it's got goes back to more on Spawn, which is big in the mid 90s. More Spawn, and then letters people would send in, and more Spawn. So that's that magazine, and then the last one I want to show you is a British magazine. It's called from 97 it's called Model and Collector's Mark this one's out of publication now they don't publish it anymore it cost originally two quid and it has a lot about model kits and stuff like that and sci-fi but it has a good science fiction um, section and let's see if we can find the oh, here's the science fiction part so it's got um something about the micro machine play sets there and the, some of the power of the force figures the um, band member that you have to send away for the R2D2 electronic what's going on buddy saga me memorabilia so you know back in the, those days and then Sometimes you can check in the here the UK adverts for selling vintage Star Wars figures quite useful and stuff that it's really expensive now in those days wasn't so expensive like the Harbour Italian figures I wish I bought them back then if I'd known how much they were going to be worth now because they were pretty cheap in, in the I can't find any adverts here but so you got uh, this magazine's divided into like model kits military science fiction and then it goes on to um, let's see what Star Wars, this is from TV Toy Zone so this is where I'm, I was meant to, I got that Gamma Rean Guard on the um, I'm not sure if it was from there but I definitely I think I bought something, so you got here they're selling Spanish Star Wars figures on with, with Return of the Jedi cards the Okay, next book we're going to look at is a German book. It's from 2001. It's by someone called Harold Niedermeyer. It's called The 2001 Collector's Guide. And it's quite a good book. It's quite small, pocket size. Well, not pocket size, but of a good size, really. And it's quite a good book. It's not perfect. It goes up to Power of the Jedi, and it starts off with vintage. So it's quite gives starts off with abbreviations and then looks at the card backs from the original vintage line, then a few oddities like the Luke telescoping saber, the rocket firing Boba Fett, and then it goes on to European free packs. So you've got a uh, French offer there, you've got a Canadian offer there, you've got a German offer there, Italian offer there, Irish offer at the top, and then the Kenner six pack for Empire Strikes Back, and then the original really rare three packs, which some of these have been redone in the Vintage collection last year. So I had a chance of buying one of those once. I turned my nose up against, I wish I had now, but it's too late now. Then we go on to episode one, sort of odd oddities, and of a dress, uh, the colours mix or deteriorate and that produces a gold colour. So she often has gold coloured neck and that's just due to uh, changes in the paint. And she comes in this cape with quite an elaborate printing on it, pattern. And 